uh, during that election. He never ran again for president, but he was a political icon in that region. And he'll be remembered with a lot of things, including the, the struggles, the detention, and uh, of course, uh, his contribution to the democracy of this country. So we expect a lot from there, uh, from Muranga, and we'll have a live report later for you from Muranga. And as I mentioned earlier on right here in studio in uh, a few minutes, we'll be speaking about the uh, significance of performance management and um, measurement and we would like to understand that. And uh, of course we will be talking about um, the institutionalization of the performance management which was introduced to the judiciary. I think sometimes last year when uh, the new Chief Justice took over and uh, they'll also be awarding some top performers from across the division and uh, th we'll be talking about that later on. But in studio we already have uh, our panel who will be engaging us in this discussion and we'll be speaking to them. But let's just uh, go back to Muranga for a few seconds and listen in before we begin our discussion right here in studio of us now may observe a moment of silence as I request our Lord Bishops just to go on behalf of all of us as mourners and receive the body as we all wait here, patiently and silently. So our Lord Bishops, I kindly request you just to go on our behalf to receive the body for us. And when the bishops come, at the entrance, we shall all rise up as they usher in the body with words of procession. So when we see the bishops there by the entrance, I kindly request that we all stand as we wait for them to usher in with some words of procession. So we now wait for the, our Lord bishops just to go and usher in the body on our behalf. Thank you very, very much.
Well, Muranga Governor Mwangi wa Iria right there on your screen. This is being hosted within his county. Kenneth Matiba is a political icon from that county, not only for Muranga, but he's a leader that was known all over the nation. Some of us who grew up in uh, the 80s remember Matiba for his activities, especially in the 90s. Remember the election he ran in and came uh, number two. That's uh, after President uh, Moy, the retired President Moy. We remember a lot about uh, um, uh, Kenneth Matiba and these things we remember, most of it is likely to come out of that event that is widely attended by leaders from across the board. It's amazing in this country how federal usually bring the leadership together and you understand the language they speak. It's a language of unity. Yesterday, President Kenyatta saying we should emulate Kenneth Matiba. Right, we will have a, a live report from Muranga for you later on. But let's come back to studio with our discussion today. And I have in studio senior judiciary officials. Now, tomorrow there's an event. I remember covering this event last year when, uh, um, last year or the other year, I can't really remember, but when it was launched, when uh, the current Chief Justice just took over. And this is uh, one of the things he came up with because um, in his mind, uh, the Chief Justice was very clear that the milestones that have been made at the judiciary needs to be sustained. Uh, he was not looking to move the judiciary to a next level before ensuring that the milestones that have been achieved in the judiciary, especially the transformation, is maintained. Now, tomorrow, one of the things that is going to happen, uh, uh, gentlemen, is there's an award ceremony. But before I talk about what's happening tomorrow, let me introduce them once again. We have a, uh, sitting an extreme left, uh, Dr. Paul Kimalu. He's the acting director uh, of Performance Management Directorate. And I think this really falls within your ambit, right? Yes. Yes. So uh, uh, he will be take, telling us uh, about that. Then we have Justice uh, Kiare Waweru. He's the presiding judge at Busia High Court. He's also joining us to talk to us about this. And then finally, we have uh, uh, Honorable Lorot. He's a senior principal magistrate at the Machakos Law Court. Yes. All right, thank you, gentlemen, for coming. And uh, let's begin the discussion. So widely, let's begin from where you sit. What is uh, performance management? What is this measurement? What are we measuring in the judiciary? The number of cases we handle, what exactly are we doing? I begin with you, Paul. Uh, yes. Thank you, Ken. Performance management uh, in the judiciary is about uh, measuring efficiency in service delivery. It's about measuring timeliness in okay. delivery of justice. It's about efficiency. It's about transparency and accountability in the activities in service delivery of the judiciary. Okay. Uh, uh, that's very interesting because then now my question will be, what are the tools? What do we use to measure this? The main tool we use uh, for performance management is uh, performance management and measurement understanding. Mm -hmm. And this is a tool, it's an agreement between a court and uh, uh, the, it, in the Manchester Court is between the Manchester Court and the Chief Legislature of the Judiciary. Okay. In the Supreme Court is about uh, the Deputy Chief Justice and the Chief Justice. Is, is this a contract? It's a, yes. It's a contract, it's a, a written contract sort of. Yes. But this has never been part of the Judiciary. We've never had judges writing performance because to be in my mind this is sort of a performance contract. Yes, in the judicial we call it performance management. Management. And, but and measurement and understanding. Why but the understanding? basically it's performance contract. You're basically playing with the language. <laughs> you <know? laughs> uh, you're basically playing with the language. So that's what is measured. So it depends on the division. If we're in the magistrate's court, it's between the magistrate and the chief register. Do yes. they come together and sit and draft this? Or it's from the top coming to the magistrate? It's a process. Okay. A process uh, which starts with the negotiation and target setting. Okay. Uh, negotiation between the two parties, we call them the two parties. The first party, which is uh, Sua Pfizer, and the second party, which is the implementing. Uh, given the baseline statistics, the baseline performance, okay. we base uh, the negotiation and target setting on those baseline. Okay. For example, assume uh, the product.
We continue to receive the dignitaries. We are privileged to have you with us. You're welcome into our service as we continue maintaining silence in honor of that great hero of our nation, Kenya. It's good to be reflecting on some biblical words, especially Psalms, Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 7. The glass withers and the flyers, flowers fail. The glass withers and the flowers fall because the blood of the Lord blows them. Surely, the people are glass. Blessed are those that mourn, for they will be comforted. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Saying is sure, if we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, and that is the devil. The Bible also says that to him who overcomes, I will give the right to sit with me on the throne, just as I overcame, sat down with my father on his throne. Psalms 48 and verse 14 reminds us that, that we tell the next generation that this is God, our God forever and ever. He himself will guide us up to death. And for all of us, as I both together, we be faithful unto death, and the Lord will give us and the clown of life. As we continue with the procession, studying as we are on our programs, turn to him, to God be the glory. Page 23, to God be the glory. Still, still, and as we continue with the procession, choir, please read us.
monas who are gathered today, it is my pleasure to invite Bishop Alan from ACK Diocese of Mount Kenya Central to lead us in our opening prayers. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we want to praise you. We want to exhort you. For you are, you are our God. You are eternal. You have always been there, and you will always be there. And we believe and trust we are with us here. We want to thank you for the life of our departed Honorable Kenneth Matiba. We thank you for the good life that he lived and for, for all the good works that you enabled him to do while he was alive. Works that have assisted your people in different ways. And as we gather here today to give you thanks for his life and to bid him farewell, we want to invite you, dear Lord, to be with us. We want to pray that you will watch over this gathering from the beginning to the end. And we pray that any person that you have opportunity to say anything will speak guided by you so that at the end we'll glorify your name. We want to thank you for the presence of our president, His Excellency the President Uhuru Kenyatta. We want to pray for him as he continue to guide us and lead us in this nation that you be with him. We thank you for all the other leaders who have come. So, Lord, be with us, guide us, and when you have done everything according to thy will, may thy name be glorified and your blessings be with us through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Who remain standing? Brothers and sisters, we have come together, gathered as we are, to bid farewell to our beloved brother and a great hero in our nation, Kenya, Kenneth Matiba, whom the Lord has taken to himself. Yet we believe that Jesus, since Jesus died and rose again, so it will be for those who die in Christ, for God will bring them to life with Jesus. Heavenly Father, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you have given us a true faith and a sure hope. Strengthen this faith and this hope in us all our days, that we may live as those who believe in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, and the resurrection to eternal life. Amen. We will remain standing for the litany reading. As we remain standing, I want to request that we participate in the responses as some of you will be guided through the screens. This is Ecclesiastes chapter number 3, verse 2 to 8. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born, and a, time to die. a time to plant, a time to weep, a time to mourn, a time to cast away stones, a time to embrace, a time to seek, a time to keep, a time to rend, a time to keep silent. As we remain standing kindly, we want to request that we hear the psalm reading. Psalm reading come from Psalm 90, starting from verse 1. Psalm 90, from verse 1. A prayer of Moses, the man of God. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout the generations. Before the mounting were born, or you brought forth the earth and the world. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn men back to dust, saying, 
return to dust, O sons of men. For a thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in a night. You sweep men away in a strip of death. They are like a new grass of the morning, though in the morning it springs up new, by evening it dries and withered. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. You have set our iniquities before you, our sacred sins in the light of your presence. All our days pass away under your love. We finish our years in a mourn. The length of our days is 70 years or 80. If we have the strength, yet their span is but tremble and sorrow. For they quickly pass and we fly away. Who knows the power of your anger? For your love is as great as the fear that is due for you. Teach us to number our days. A light that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Relent, O Lord. How long will it be? Have compassion on your servant. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us. For as many years we have seen tremble. May your deeds be shown to your servant, your spreader to their children. May the favor of the Lord our God rest upon us. Establish the work of our hearts for us. Yes, establish the work of our hearts. Glory to the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it is when the beginning. I kindly request that we all take our seats as we have our first and second leadings together. Our first reading is coming from the book of First Samuel, chapter 12, and I'll read starting from verse 1. First Samuel, chapter 12, starting to read from verse 1. Samuel said to all Israel, I have listened to everything you sent to me and have set a king over you. Now you have a king as your reader. As for me, I'm old and gray, and my sons are here with you. I have been your reader from my youth until this day. Here I stand. Testify against me in the presence of the Lord and his anointed, whose ox have I taken? Whose donkeys have I taken? Whom have I cheated? Whom have I oppressed? From whose hand have I accepted a bribe to make my, me shut my eyes? I have done, if I have done any of these things, I'll make it light. You have not cheated or oppressed us, they replied. You have not taken, taken anything from anyone's hand. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 to 7. Revelation chapter 21. Verses, 20, uh, uh, verses 1 to 7, and I'm going to read. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. It was no longer in the sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. 
There will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old orders of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I'm making everything new. Then he said, Lie this down, for these ones are trustworthy and true. He said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. To him who is thirsty, I will give to drink without cost from the spring of the water of life. He who overcomes will inherit all this. I will be his God, and he will be my son. This is the word of the Lord. We are still in the service. We remain in the service. And at this juncture, I want to invite the one who do us the Yoroje, David Kalugu Mugo. Please come over and lead the Yoroje. Your Excellency, we kindly request that we shall do it in Kikuyu because of the great mourners of Mulanga County who will understand Kikuyu language. For those of us who may not understand that language, kindly move with the Rinda on the English Yoroje because it is there in your program. Welcome. David Karugomogo, Nini Mamma, we are a muni, wa honorable Kenneth Matiba, the youngest brother to Matiba's mother. Cancer has been Zangu, Ravadaris, Mameni, Muev, Matiba Koheri, Asante Sana. Ashio to the correct one of Wera Wago, the Deca Otetua Mativa, Kumana eighteen seventy nine, did I get the politics in it? Kedome, Honorable Kenneth Mativa Jindo, Kenneth Stanley Jindo Mativa, Ashia Little Mweli, Emwe, Wagata Datu, Muakawa nineteen thirty two, Niatika Stanley Jindo. Na susa ni waji kuwa jindo. Gatura ini kanili kaki angima. Itura ini ya kahuhia. Gishigo kia mbunge ya kiharu. Kaunti ya muranga. Ndewe irijithadhi. Harishi ya namu waja. Shiamu tika ili standiri jindo. Mugadhe matipa. Ambiri ili ya githo mwge ya ke. Mwakawan. Girimu na magana kenda mamiro ngwena Shukuru Elia hende Eo yeta wakahuhi ya practicing school Mwaka wa girimu na magana kenda mamiro ngwena na ilaga tu Ale kia kuhituka Kigaranio Thank you Ale kia kuhituka kigaranio Gea common entrance Niyadhi ile kudho mela shukuru wa mali ila intermediate. Kulea idhe adho mithagia. Ainge ile shukuru eo mwaka wa angirimo na magana keda mamelo gwena na mugu waja. Ali murutuo wa kudho ma akinukaka omudhenya. Discora. No mwaka ine wa angirimo na magana keda mamelo gwena na keda. Matipani asho kiri yoka huu hiya practicing school. Adho mage agekomaka shukuru. Todo ide ni arutiruo maleira agetuaruo agado midie shukuru waka hoko ine intermediate kia bu mwaka ine wa angiri mo na magana kenda mamero gona na inya inya ogedie gudira kuka huia nikuo eki ireke jarani yoga kure kia primary 
mwakaine wa ngirie mwena magana kenda ma mirongo etano akihituka wega muno na agitwa shukuru wa alliance high school kuria aingirire kirathi kya form 1 mwakaine wa ngirie mwena magana kenda ma mirongo etano na imwe ku alliance high school matiba ni yagire igweta muno tondu wa utongoria wake uria watumire athuru ari muteithiriria wa wa mutongoria arutuho deputy school captain ningine athurirwe gutongoria arutuho aria angi mathakaga mubira wa maguru kuhura na ngudi na mathako maria metagwo na githungu gymnastics kuno kuombatiba amenyeire uhoro wa kuhaisha irema na akiwenda muno kinya thutha ucio arikitie kuma shukuru akihaisha mount kinya kilimanjaro na irima iria nene muno bururini kuria asia cietagwo himalayas ohideyo ni athodekire urata wa gutura na anake kuma miena mingi ta philip gashoka nimuno dimureu ivanson gashohe gishohe ningi ku alliance no ku mwana keti mbatiba adho mire maundu maingi mare amamu thomi mamu hotithirie guthondeka muturire wake wa thuthaini ali mo mare igweta aku alliance takari francis loria campo na james smith ni matwe kire kionereria muno kinene muno hari mbatiba ginya agitweka wa kwiriria na thuthaini kurumirira maundu maria ali mo acio mambo thomithirie mugathe mbatiba ni ari kirie githomo kya alliance mbaka ino wa ngirimo magana kenda ma mirongo etano na inya na gicoka kwa ukahuhia iyo yari hede ya wihuge riria muturire wa anake gikuyu wari muritu muno tondu ni meko wagirwo kunyita mbuto cia mau mau baru Nilia kikaraniyo ya Cambridge Overseas School Certificate. Kia umire, kia bilili ya ini kia mwaka wa gini mwena mwaka kena mamba yungu tanu na idhano. Mmatipa niya koriruo, eke tewega muno, kinya agetuwa shukuru wa makerele University College. Kuri aburuli wa Uganda. Eo noyo yari shukuru ya madhomuma ite na lewu vene wa East Africa eliyoze ihida leo ko makerere matiba and and kidhiriyo kuthomera diploma ya walimu no ni athire na mbere agithomera degree ya BA ya history geography na sociology ohendeyo ni mbere ile kia magetagwo makerere kikuyu embu meru students association mkemsa mugathema tiba asiariro kanithaine wa anglican church of kenya sk area yetagwo church of the province of kenya cpk ni aturire ari murumiriri mukaru wa sk area atuire athairire muno hari ukuria wayo kimiako kumalilea ahe ilo mushara wake wabere mwaka wagiri mwena magana matadatu magana kenda mamirogwe tadatu ni aviete akiara magia wera wake hali okulia kadiza eo vuru liwoze ona agata hivya okulia makandiza magi makilia muno kumalilea adhu liwota mubunge Mugathe Matiba, ni menda nile na mama Endith Wajiro. Na makihika ni ya mwaka ini wagiri mwe na mwaka na kena mambi rogo tada tunai mwe. Mambi tempa kashemani ya mwanake. Mambi tempa kashemani ya mwanake tipa tipa alimburutuo alliance. Ni mara adhimi tuonda shiana idhano, Susan, Remod, Aive, Julie, na Gitao na tuguka mwaja. Mwaja matiba, 
Niande kilo chakarani rohonga ine rohage thomo mwaka wa giri mwe na magana matada tu magana kenda mambero gwe tada tu ale omburu tu oma kerele wale wera wa kuruta rele ya shukuru ya hingo na wale wa kumenya ni arutu wa aliku magu teidio ni kurehero wa githomo no ali kia kwe kira kwe kadigiri yake Ali kia kwe kira digiri yake muhu kwa mwaka wa giri mwena mwena kia dama ambiro kwe tada tu mwaka adha matiba ni hatu miruo aga thomidia shukuru ya kangaru secondary school kure aebu taiga na kuikara kumuno todo kure mweli wa keda mwaka ushio ni eti ruo kikaro kinene kia rohongero wagi thomo Nairobi atuye ke mwini wa mwuru wa mireli mwenene wagi thomo kia igoro that's higher education mwira wake ulea wale mwenene ni kuhe maro wa arutu wa alea Madhi ya kutho omera Amerika Dhine wa mutaratara Olea Olea ngumo muno Weta kwa students airlift Waru boya gyo Ni ateti Tacho mboya Dr. Keanu Na kariyo kiwa jiri Ni hede yo aruta kawera kushio Ashe manilienda ateti Male igweta Tanjeroke mungai Uyo wai ya ki Biyoko inange, Lauren Sagini, na Daniel Arab Moy, alea mali na mali ya manene, maku njitanira, tabarira inde ishio, ni guo ando a kwao mateivike. Muga adha matiba, ni hundu waki yoke yake, ni aha ishidi yoga dhe, wira ini kinja mwali mwaka ino wangiri, mwana 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 Agituo muruga mireli mwenene Pama yu sekretari Ruhonga hiniru wakitho omo Ali na ukuru wami ya kamiru wakwe tasu no mwe Nyasha ukire agitongolia Honge ige Ginyashia piyashara Na shia mashia ukulia wamu ige Cooperatives Kulia arutire meaka etano Agishoka agitika wera Wadhilikali mwaka hini mweli Miru wakwe tatu Wagata datu 1968 Agiyoka kutika wera wa Dhirikari Mugadha matipa ni abire ilie Guetiruo wera ni makabu ni maige Mare ya mwone ya teke oke ya weho kekuwa ke Na weho kekuwa ke Kambu ni dhano Nishia mwete ile wera No agidhura kudhye kabu ni ya johi Ya kija buru wa reis Mwaka wa angiri mwana mwaka na kera na ambiru kwa sada tuna inyanya Niambire hili ya wera wa taburuto Wakuruga mirela kaboni Management rene Agishoka mwaka wa kere Agituwe kambu teithia Wamuruga mireli wa kamboni Person was sent to the managing director Na dhuda wa Kuruta mawera matika hile Ma kuiha na kuendia johi Nia hili ya wera wa kuruga mirela Kamboni ya kijaburu wa risi Ali managing director. Dhuda ushio. Ahe iluwa wira wa kuru kamirira. Kambu niya East African Breweries. Na kulimu waka wa gilimu wa nambanga kena mambi na mungu wajana. Mungu waja. Agituwa mwika nilijete wa kambu ni eo. O akiruta wira kuu. Kwa njohi. Mungu adhe matipa. Ni ambire ili ya ulimi. Wake biyashara. Ulea wadhe remire muno. Niambire hili ya kule ba mahua Mwuda ini wake wali ya rarej Haka matuma makedi ya mwure mo Dhuda ushio Nia inge lile biyashara ini Shia waka manyumba Gaveti Ndege Mikawa na mashukuru Ni manji tandile na Stephen Smith Makiabire hili ya kaboni Ya mikawa ya Alliance Group Na makihingura na ni mahi ngulile mikawa Mombasa na Mount Kinya. Mare ele, mabili ya shukuru ya siya Hillcrest na matipa agishoka akiabili ya gaviti ya The People ili ya omu the itawo The People Daily. 
Oria edete kwa isha irima. Muga adhema tipa. Noguo endete madhako. Mami theba itigaine. Ili ayamu kenagia. Muno akirolera. Kana agithaka. Ithako ni mbwe edete muno kuli mare ya magi. Ni mubira wa maguru. Ulea abire ili ya kudhaka. Alika heka nili. Na hindi otuwa mweta ka mute nedhi. Alika heka nili kao. Kwa ogisha ki, na agitha akira mashukuru, marea adho mera. O na alinda wera mwingi, atea, matipa ni one kaka kaige, kaige, iharo inesi ya mubira, aki umirelia timu elea anyitete baru. Alimune newa kinja brewaris, na dhuza ine East African brewaris, Matipa ni hatu mire wabishi yake Vutigiri la Ate kambu ni isio Nishiongere la onye tibaru Kebesha Mubira wa maguru Wendo ushio wake Nogu hatu mire kambu ni ya kinya Brewerish Itho deke kikudi kia mubira Gishita nage na ikudi Inge tagomahia Na AFC Leopards Ili ya Ita hote kaka mubira matukumashio. Wedo ushio wa mubira wa maguru. Nungu watu mire munga adhema tiba ambiriria kiyama. Kia kinya football league KFL. Kiria yatu ya kire kia bata mundo. Hale kutu walidi ya mashina no. Ma mubira wa maguru bururine. Na todua, na todua, na wera mwenene, ule ya kekudi keu, kia rutire, nikio matipa oni le niwega, aruga beta mbo ikarigete, waki ama kinene, kia mbo vira poro lini, nikio nikinja football federation, mwakaini wa 1974, na kihotana. Tika matha hako, kwa isha irema, na mawera makandida, mwaka adha matipa, ni yako leto agete hivi ya maodo mbaige muno mago kuri ya mbaige miaka ya bere vururi wa njita we ya aji ni njita ndiri ya ni njita ndiri na atongoli ya age mare igueta amuranga tajo ni meshuki maina wa ijege na solo mboni karaja makia bere ya muranga harabi development fund ili ya asho kile Mwakaine wagiribu wana mangana kano mambi nongo mwagwa jana idhano Ekiabiriri ya Muranga College of Technology Ile ya Oumuthi itakuwa Muranga University College Kuma onyinyi ne wake Mwaka adhe matifa Oe kuri hede akaingira otetine Na hile ni arutirewe ya mwenene Wako muhariria Todo walele ya kahida kau kaka kinya Niamu heaga maudu maige, maude, onagutuweka, ihida leti ya kinyete. Ithenyare u, liyako igira utetine, nilie re hile mwaka wa, gilimu enamba na kia na mambi nongo mungu waja, na keda. Nilia aru gamile kishiko kia bunge, kia bili, kilia umudhi jita kukiharu, na kia mbage ya kandu, agishida. Ni ya vile na mbele kuruga mirira Gishiko keu Maita matatu Maita mashio matatu Mambele aruga mirire kiharu Bunge Ni ahe iluwa wira wa minister Wa maudu Madu ire Na ukulia wa muige Culture and social services Minister wa miyako Yoni mivango ya Manyumba Na mutarata na mitarata raya ukulia wa aburuli, works and housing, physical planning, minister wa ugima wa mwiri, health, na ukui, na minister wa ukui, na umemerekia, transport and communication. Ata na shoka kuwe heli ya dhirikali ni dhivemba ya mwaka wa giri mwena mwena kena mwena 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 na keda. Mwaka wa themba tiba, nyaru tirewe ila mwenene, wakuru ila kihoto wala gani ya 
na gitio kia adu a Kenya riria thirikali ya Daniel Arab Moi yaru gire mihaka ikimbagira kene na ikimanyarira muno nyanjitanire na njorua iria ingi ciaru wagira maundu macio na magithondeka kiama kia Forum for the Restoration of Democracy FOD na nikio kia kiria kia ri kiama kia mugethanero kiria mwingi wa Kenya wete kitie ni giku maruta mujororo ine wa o dictator githurano kia mwaka wa 1992 ya Kenya mugathe matiba ni arugamire na kiama kia Ford asili no agishidwo na kurani ni ni moi githurano kiria gitoire gwitikitio ni kuiwo kiairwo niguo matiba dakahote na niguo onanie marakara make ni um, <coughs> ni umarambali wa githurano ta kuiwo kura mwaka wa giri mwana magana kena meroke na igire mugathe matiba ni atongoririe kiama giake na rumereri ake aige kurega kuikia kura githurano kia mwaka wa 1997 akienda katiba ya Kenya yambe ithengio kuri mweri wa gatano mwaka wa 1991 hidiria ari ithamirio kamiti mugathe matiba ni anyitirwo ni ndwari iria yitagwo na githungu stroke iria yagiririe yagiririe kurigitwo na mituke no thirikali ya moi ni aregire kumutwara thibitari na agikara atari murigite thutha ucio ni atwa thutha ucio ni atwarirwo thibitari abo andikitwo ritwa ria mushiri niguo andu matikamumenye uhoro ni wabukire na thutha wa muingi wa Kenya kuona ni marakara maingi muno mugathe matiba ni arekereirio jera na akiyukio ni andu ake no tondu wa uria aigirwo muno ithamirio na tatu waritwo thibitari dwari yake ni yakurirwo yaingira muno na ni athire na mbere guthinio ni mwiri kuma hau nikyo kuma hindi iyo matukuma ria maingi arakoragwo agikara diani kuria Mombasa tondu riera ria ku nirio rirari riega na dwari yake kuri mwaka wa giri igere na ikumira ithano ni akumire thibitari shimye ithathatu na ari kia kurigitwo mwiri wake mwiri ni wokire wega na akihota kuikira maundu maingi maria atahotaga kuikira ari kia kuma jera o uguo kuri mweri wa keri mwaka ini uyu 2018 atengeririo thibitari thutha kurwa thutha kurwara ringi thutha wa kurwara ringi nyarigitirwo na akigwo wega no atanarekererio au me thibitari akenyitukio ni muri murengi na kuri mweri 15 mweri wa kana mwaka uyu mugathe matiba ni etiro mwatha ni ahe matiba kihuruko gitathiraga na utheri wa hingo ciothe ni umutheragie arohuruko horo thank you Thank you very much for the good presentation of the eurology and we had said those who could not understand kikuyu i'm sure they have gone with him as he rent in the english eurology your excellency 
we are happy to receive the deputy president who has joined us. Can we appreciate him? Thank you. Thank you very much. At this juncture, there are a few choirs who have come to mourn with the family and to give them comfort. And I want to give the ACK St. James and Nomatea's Cathedral Choir a chance for only one presentation. Kaidre Cathedral Choir. Thank you, St. James and Omatea's Cathedral Choir. Your Excellency, as I have been requested by the family to kindly ask Mr. Sami Louis to take us through the tribute section. And so, Sami Louis, please take us through the tribute session for the family. We shall request ACK Mokoyo Choir to, pre to prepare themselves after the tribute. You will present your number. Mrs. Edith Matiba, fondly known as Mama Susan. Your Excellency, the President Honorable Uhuru Kenyatta. Your Excellency, 
the Deputy President, Honorable William Ruto, the Matiba family. I also would like to recognize the presence of the Honorable Raila Odinga, former Prime Minister, and Mrs. Aida Odinga, the Member of Parliament for this particular area where we are, Keharu, Mr. Ndindi, Honorable Ndindi Nyoro, the woman representative, Sabina Chege, the Senator for Muranga, Irung, Honorable Irungu Kangata, and His Excellency, the Governor of Muranga, Mr. Mwangiwa Iria. And I have noticed in the, uh, amongst us the presence of the Governor of Mombasa, the Honorable Hassan Joho, and the Governor of Kisumu, the Honorable Anyang Nyongo, the Speakers of Muranga and Kiambu Counties, and if at all you're a governor or a senator and have not noticed, please forgive me, because those are the ones that I was able to note. And also the clergy, led by the Right Reverend Timothy Gichere, Bishop of the ACK Diocese of Mount Kenya Central. I have only two presentations to make. Uh, of the people who are going to be giving their tributes on behalf of the family. But later on in the program, I'll be able to introduce those who have been friends and also colleagues of His Excellency. Uh, uh, of, of the Honorable Mr. Matiba. I am informed that we have also in our midst His Excellency the Governor of Meru, Honorable Kiraitu Murungi, and also His Excellency the Governor of Kiambu, and the Governor of Nairobi City County. They are also with us. We are now going to have tribute being paid to the family, and on behalf of Mama Susan, that is Mrs. Edith Matiba, we have her sister-in-law, Mrs. Alice Mwangi, to be able to make that presentation. Praise God. Praise God again. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Uhuru Kenyatta, the Kraje, Pheromonas, Protocol Observed. I am humbled to be given this chance to read your OJ, I mean, to read the tribute for mom, I'm calling for calm. You have heard the mourners are celebrating because of the generosity that we have had. I've been married for some years, so I know the people and the family enough. It will be soft. We all know Mama Sue. Mama Susan as soft and generous, I'll try to fit in her shoes so that we can move nicely. And I read. Let's move together as we enjoy the other part, the other story of Mrs. Matiba. Here we go. Ken and I met six, seven years ago 
when he enrolled at Arayans High School in 1951. His father was a friend of my older brother. So together, they visited my parents' house in Zogoto. As I did for any visitor, I served him tea and food. But I really didn't have or take a particular notice of him. However, he remembered the meeting more vividly than I did. During the emergency period, we would stay at the alliance, he would stay at the alliance and frequently visit our family home, which is when I got to know him just a little bit better. In 1952, I enrolled at African Girls, which subsequently became Arayans Girls. So we were in contact more frequently. In 1956, he proceeded to Makerere University, and I followed a year later. By then, one could say that we had a special friendship. We had one special friendship. Though he graduated a year ahead of me, he somehow decided to stay on for another year to pursue his postgraduate diploma in education while I completed my bachelor's degree. While I don't want to say that he stayed on for another year, just to be with me, I am happy that he did. So it's as well as saying he waited. Are we together? Thank you. From his early days, Ken was always very determined. I was his focus during our courtship. That blossomed after graduation. Every other weekend, he would drive from Nairobi to visit me in Kitare, where I was posted as a teacher. Thank you, Petro was not expensive that, those days. Within four months, he proposed to me, which gave me a good reason to transfer to Nairobi, where I soon found a job at, at Jean's school, now the Kenya Institute of Adm Administration. We married in April 1961. And only a few days ago, we celebrated our 57th wedding anniversary together. To be precise, their anniversary is on 8th of April. And the dad went to be on, with the road on 11th, so it was on 15th. So it was one week later. I thank God that young man from Arias pursued me so diligently because not many couples get to enjoy 57 years together. For Ken, taking care of his family was paramount. Despite constant pressure, to join politics during the late 60s, he remained focused on his 10, 10, 10 plan. He wanted to have 10 years in government service, then 10 years in private business before embarking on the 10 years in politics. It will bear with me that the first 10 and the second 10 was accomplished. The third 10, we don't know what happened. The reason, there's a question mark there. He wanted to ensure that by the time he began his political career, his family was well taken care of financially. A goal that he achieved. Our five children 
enjoyed the best education that we could provide. While growing up, they were always comfortable. As a father, he was generous to a fault. I remember one day when I asked him to bring home ice cream cones for the kids. He instead brought four or five liter tubs of ice cream. Remember, this is Remuru and you know the weather, and this is ice cream. It was just the way he was. Even with shopping, he would come home with not one, not two, not three, but four or five dresses for me. Generosity. His generosity knew no bounds. Beyond our family, countless children in Keharu benefited from his financial bursaries, personal bursaries. If they passed well and needed fees, Ken would support them. And I know we have some with us here today. You can hear your excellency. I often laughed at him by saying that he had holes in his pockets because whatever money he left with each morning, he would find someone to bless with each day. Many know him as a charismatic individual, but he may not be known of the kidlet spirit he enjoyed with the children. He had a special connection with the youngsters, whether they knew him or not. He connected with them in a special way that few adults can. In his later years, his joy came from his grandchildren. Being able to hug them, laugh with them, and just watch them whenever they visited our home in Diani. It was such a special gift. Ken's determination came to the fore in a formidable way when he, be, when, he became, when, when he came out of detention. Immediately after his abrupt release in 1991, we rushed him to Radan for emergency treatment for the stroke that he suffered while in detention. We thought things were under control, but we had no idea that he would suffer another stroke just a few days after admission in the Radan Hospital. The two strokes were very nearly wiped him out. He was paralyzed and he lost his speech. Ken had to run everything again from a scratch. How to eat, how to walk, the letters of the alphabet, that is A, B, C, D to Z, how to read, and even how to speak. Through all this, and by the grace of God, his absolute determination and his inborn sense of self-sufficiency brought him back from the brink. It took more than a year, but by 1992, he had recovered in enough to fight for a political seat once again. I confess that I was always a fan of his entering politics. But before he made any major decisions, including his political career, he always consulted me for the agreement and what to do, where well, that which will be best for our family. At the end of the day, I prayed to God and made peace with his desire to make an impact because I knew where it came from. It came from his deep desire to leave the people of Keharo 
and across Kenya in a better place than which he grew up in. Ken wanted dignity, financial freedom, and social justice for every Kenyan. And that was a dream that was instilled in him from a very young age. Despite his own health issues, Ken was committed to the well-being of his family and those allowed him. Even when he could not do very much physically, he ensured that I received the best medical care for my own health concerns. It was very hard to watch my husband through his declining health. He had been so vital, so full of if and energy, so busy and social. I bear witness that Mrs. Matiba stayed with the husband to the time he left us. He, she really cared. He bore his physical discomfort with the same courage and fortitude that he executed in his public life. He never read on the full extent of his suffering as he wrestled bravely to the very end. Ken confessed his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, so I'm comforted knowing that he has crossed the Jordan to the place of the rest, adhering. I'm sure he is now walking, talking, loving again, fully enjoying the company of the crowd of faithful witnesses. He remember the parents and the siblings who have gone ahead of him. I thank God for the fullness of our lives spent together. Fare thee well, my friend, a partner for life. Peace be with, peace I live with you, my peace I give you. I don't give to you as the word gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. John 14, 27. God bless you. This is Alice Mwangi, the sister-in-law of Mama Susan for delivering that message with quite a lot of feeling and passion. It is now my honorable duty and also uh, feeling to invite the eldest uh, in the home of Mr. Matiba, and this is Susan Matiba Momto. Thank you. Your Excellency, President of the Republic of Kenya, Uhuru Kenyatta, and Your Excellency, the Deputy President of Kenya, William Ruto, uh, Your Excellency, the Governor of Moranga, our host today, Mr. Mwangi Wairia, and all the dignitaries who have joined us today, including our dear friend, um, the Honorable Raila Odinga and Mama Aida, friends, fellow mourners. I am sharing this tribute on behalf of my siblings, Raymond, Ivy, Julie, and Gitao. They have allowed me to say something from my heart. Together, we have written a tribute to our father, which you will find in the program. But today, I want to share a thought that the Holy Spirit put into my heart earlier this week concerning him. 
a scripture from the book of 2 Timothy, the first chapter, verse 7, in which Paul tells his disciple Timothy, as he encourages him to be bold in his ministry, he said to him, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And what I felt the spirit of God was telling me was that God gave a very special gift to our father. That was the gift of fearlessness. For surely, our father lived his life without fear. He was fearless in his relationships with all people. He was not afraid to show love and to demonstrate it to the fullest. He was not afraid to chide and to correct. He was not afraid to speak his mind. He was not afraid of spending time and energy and resources, and particularly when it came to making another person's life better. For us as children, dad spared nothing to make us happy, to provide for us, to give us good educations. But not only that, he gave us great experiences. He was a fearless adventurer, and he took us along with him on his adventures. He bequeathed to us as a family, in particular, a lifetime love of sport and of fun and of the enjoyment of life with whatever God has granted. Dad was not afraid of giving and giving to the fullest because dad knew the secret. He knew that resources never run out because they are given by the almighty and the infinite God. And so he knew he could pour out his life and the next day it would be refreshed and restored so he could give again. He was fearless in his vision for himself and for his family, for all his friends and for his nation. He dreamed big dreams and he was not afraid to execute them with excellence. Brothers and sisters, if we are to remember this great man, our dad, in actions and not just in words, we too will cast aside our fear. The fear that stops us from achieving the very best that we can. The fear that stops us from choosing what is right over what is wrong. The fear that stops us from giving our very best to our nation and to our families and to those that God has surrounded us with. May God help us. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you very much, Susan for delivering that particular tribute with all the feelings. I will call upon Lord Owen, but not, if I could, Lord Owen, allow me because we will come to the friends and colleagues in another sport. In the meantime, oh, I've been told, I think you better move on. Lord Owen, now, Lord Owen was, uh, a form, is the former British Foreign Secretary and a very great fan of the Honorable Matiba and the family. 
He has traveled all the way from Britain to be able to be with us for this particular function. Karibu. Your Excellency, President Kenyatta, Deputy President, distinguished guests, and all the people from Moranga County who I can see even outside this tent. I speak immediately as a politician. No politician has power without the support of the people, and above all, the people of the area in which they represent in Parliament. You stood by Ken in very difficult times and were loyal friends to him, and he often talked about you. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I speak now as a doctor of medicine and a specialist in the brain. When that fateful day took place, when Edith rang me in London, to say what had happened to Ken. I rang President Moy, who I had met before with Ken, and I convinced him that this was a very, very serious brain injury and he needed to go to London. He asked me to meet him at the airport and to take him to the hospital, which I gladly did. A few days later, he had another brain hemorrhage and this time it was vital that he had surgery. I waited outside the operating theater and listened to the doctors had difficulty in waking him up. It was clearly very, very seriously ill and I thought he was dying. We took him to another hospital and put him to sleep for two weeks, a new treatment and in his case, a wonderful treatment. I think it saved his life. You heard from Susan and the words of his mother. Think of it as a politician not to be able to speak and above all for difficult for Ken to not be able to walk, to not be able to eat and not to be able to read. There followed a study in courage of two people. Ken could never have done it without being Ken and he could never have done it without the support, the sustained support over days, weeks, months, and years of Edith. And I salute you, Edith. <laughs> Time is short and many others will want to speak. He was a treasured friend. In the words of the great poet, who would true valor see? See it in this man. He did not fear what men say. He labored night and day to be a pilgrim. Thank you very much, Lord Owen. Just before I hand back to the provost, would like to also recognize the presence of all the seven members of parliament for Moranga, that is from Kandara, Madeira, Kangema, Batanga, Kigumo, Maragua, and I also mentioned Kiharu. They are all, all of them with us. Would also like to mentioned that the governor of Kiambu, Ferdinand Waititu, or Baba Yao, and of Nairobi, Mike Mbuvi Sonko, are also with us. The permanent secretary is also that I would wish just to mention, because they have been members of the organizing committee, is Mr. Eugene Wamalwa, Mr. James Macharia, Mr. Rafael Tuju, Mr. Mwangi Kiunjuri, and Mr. Peter Munya. I would now like to get back to the provost so that we can continue with the church 
part of the service. Let's appreciate him. Thank you. Your Excellency, we have two more groups. One is ACK Mukoyo with a presentation. After Mukoyo, we have the Kahu Hyangaos alumni. They have a relationship with our late brother and a great hero, and they have a, a, a presentation that they would like to make. So after ACK Mukoyo, please, Kahu Hyangaos alumni, prepare for your presentation. Welcome, ACK Mukoyo.
Your Excellency, our beloved President, Your Excellency, our beloved President, Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta, Your Excellency, the Deputy President, William Samuel Ruto, our dear Auntie Edith Matiba and family, all six honored ladies and gentlemen, there are only two schools in Kenya, Kahuya Girls and the rest. Yes. yes. And, yes. and Kahuya alumni, we schooled together more than 30 years ago, and we are here to give our presentation to our uncle, Ken. Welcome. Exactly one year ago, we visited Uncle Ken in Diani just to say thank you. Payback time it was, we all agreed. We were there in our numbers and we painted Diani yellow and green. It was a joyous occasion, tears, laughter, love and more love. Elizabeth, your nurse aide, surprised us saying that the family had not seen you that happy in a long time. Little did we know that we were there to say goodbye. Your love, leadership, courage, and generosity are the values you instilled in us and will never be lost in the mists of time. Your strength and drive to stay alive is a sign of God's love for you. Your courage was unmatched. Man is at his best when he's doing his best at what he likes doing best, said Aristotle. You carry this philosophy fortified by your deep commitment to the dignity of work. You are indeed a candle with a bright flame that leads our world. Mativa Kuganaweka, our hero, our mentor, our friend, and our very own Uncle Ken. We are here to celebrate a dear uncle. He taught us to call him just that, uncle, and never a Mushiwa. The first senior government official to shake our hands and love us unconditionally. Most of us tasted a sausage for the first time in this life because Uncle Ken bought it. Others, others remember the only time they had more than one piece of meat in school is because Uncle Ken visited and donated a bowl. Most remember his birthday, the only time the menu was different. We remember he tamed all our school cards and saved us from wearing rubber boots. Those who loved entertainment remember he bought a, tam a timetable upgrading the school's DJ performance during Saturday's <coughs> school discourse. <laughs> In tears, others remember he paid their school fees. Uncle Ken, an old boy of Kahuya, taught us to be everything we are. SK Masharia, an old boy, too, has followed suit. Always with us and there for us and giving us every support whenever called for. Matipa Kuganaweka, our hero, our mentor, our friend, our very own Uncle Ken. Every time. Uncle Ken visited the school, we would assemble and sing our hearts out. The only time we were allowed to go out without order or permission. The only visitor we were allowed to receive without permission. His beautiful smile and kind demeanor is unforgettable. He was always a 
accompanied by Aunt Bibi, always smartly dressed, salt spoken, and eloquent. We envied her character and style. Uncle Ken stood for the lowest and the poorest, a great voice for the voiceless. Together with Aunt Edith, Uncle Ken touched our lives in a way no one else will. And if no one else remembers that he was at the forefront of our second liberation, at least we do. We salute you, Charles Rubia, for giving our uncle company. To our uncle Ken's family, be encouraged to know that in all situations, there is a calm assurance. Matthew 28, verse 20. Fare thee well, Uncle Ken. We love you in life. We will always love you in death. Dance with the angels and keep your food. Matipa Ugaranaweka, our hero, our mentor, our friend, and our very own uncle Ken. Rest in peace, Uncle Ken.
you very much. Let's appreciate them. Thank you very much. Kahuhi and Ugulai, good girls. Thank you very much. Nina Wa Susan, with Susan and your siblings, Your Excellency, the President of this country, we want to really appreciate your coming and the way you have responded to this family and this great loss, and especially the people of Keharu. Um, we all know that the late Kenneth uh, was a very key person, even in the place of the church uh, within this area. And that is why most of the clergy and our old bishops are here today. We want to appreciate them. I have been asked by my Lord Bishop to um, kindly introduce the bishops who have come and who are with us, and I want to take that chance now. I want to introduce and I want to request that uh, the Archbishop Julius Joroge from IPCA to just wave. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much. I want to appreciate, we appreciate Bishop Stanley Mishuki. Stanley Mishuki, I'm told he is with us. Is the president of Pentecostal Congregation. Thank you very much. I've just been told. Okay, thank you. Can I introduce um, the Right Reverend Julius Carano, the ACK Bishop of Mount Muranga South? Let's clap for him. Thank you for coming. Your Excellency, you will take note that uh, in this diocese, we are privileged to have three uh, retired bishops with us, and we want to be happy for them the Right Reverend John Mahaine, who is now 25 years after retirement. Thank you very much for coming. Right Reverend Isaac Mainanganga, thank you very much for coming. And now the Right Reverend Alan Masharia, thank you very much. Can I ask, just, just so that we May appreciate all clergy do you want to stand just so that we can appreciate you. Just stand. Please stand up, all clergy within this diocese. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. These are clergy who have benefited a lot from the ministry and support of uh, the late Kenneth. Thank you very much. Take your seats. Thank you very much. We also have others from other denominations. Please kindly, I would want to ask that you rise up. PCA moderator, thank you very much. And others, let's just appreciate them. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, I'm also informed that uh, we, in our midst, we may be having Bishop Gideon uh, Gidega, who forms part of the persons of, the eminent persons in this county. But on their behalf, maybe, in his behalf, Maybe I would want to recognize my Lord Bishop Iveraomi, uh, some of the members who make up the, the, the Council of Eminent Persons within this county. Do you want to appreciate um, Dr. Peter Munga? Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. We have Honorable Charles Rubia. I've just been told to appreciate them. Let's clap for him. We have Honorable Maina Wanjigi. We have uh, Jane Keanu Mises, Mudoni Kemani, and Nyamu Njoka. Kindly let's appreciate them. Thank you very much for coming and for being with us. That is the part that I have been asked to do, and I want to thank uh, the bishop for giving me that chance. Thank you very much. It's now my pleasure, Your Excellency. I've been asked by Mama Susan, Ninawa Susan, that we allow a group of friends who have come and she would really want them to do a presentation. This is your opportunity to bring your number. Thank you. Uh, your Excellency. This is Mama's choir. Thank you. Uh, your Excellency, the President. Republic of Kenya, Honorable Good Mungari Kenyatta. Since Sunday, when Dad went to be the road, we have been in Lemuru, condoling with all who came to visit us, and we have heard choirs, songs, choruses. So, Mom, the other day said, Why don't we have one? 
that we can do it today. To ni tanere na doa moranga. To kare to le muru to ehamu na ya meha. There is family, there is friends. Na de toa inaga ada na doma na to se ragira. Na mama su ara to ranga wega ona ko ina boko. De to dure taru ibo. Roa ko ira daki. Adi na wega. De ju to kamo kora. Otoria mam amuile. Muda ni osu ya mugo kire. Ake muera dad. We have kept the vows till death. Do we part? We will meet again in heaven. And here comes the song. Welcome. Thank you, Mom's Choir. Let's appreciate them. Your Excellency, the family has requested that we be fed first with the word of God, and then we shall get into the other sentiments. And I kindly request that all of us now stand. We prepare our hearts to hear the word of God as it will be brought by the Lord Bishop, like Reverend Timothy. And we shall do that as we sing the song still on our programs, Tazameni Kule Kalvali. It is there in our programs. Please, choir, can you read us in that song? Thank you. 
ourselves before you, this time that you have given us to meditate upon your word, we pray that Lord you may teach us, you may remind us of your will as we continue in this service. Bless me as I share your word, for this I pray in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Let's take our seats please. <clears throat> Mama Susan and family, Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta, Deputy President, William, Honorable William Ruto, former Prime Minister, and I can also see Mama Edith together with us. I can also see my Governor with us, and all protocols observed. My name is Timothy Ilogo Gichele. By the grace of God, I'm the Diocesan Bishop of the ACKI Diocese of Mount Kenya Central. When I was here last, we were with the Deputy President when uh, he attended my consecration in the same venue. And I'm very much delighted that uh, we have come back to celebrate the life of uh, Reformation icon, uh, Honorable Kenneth Matiba. I don't intend to keep you long. I only want to just to share some insights from the Word of God, just to remind us that now that uh, our Father has gone to be with the Lord, we need to learn a number of things from Him. And as I was meditating upon that, I have found no other better leading than the leadings that were led to us uh, this morning, and especially 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 1 to 4. And um, my title is headed, <coughs> Prophet Samuel is a challenge to today's leadership. And before I do that, there is a corner there that was not introduced. The ladies you see in front there are Bishop's wife. To the farthest end, we have our, our mother, Mama Gachuche, wife to the late Bishop uh, Gachuche Gatambo. And just next is wife to uh, Bishop uh, Mahiaine, our first bishop in this diocese. And next to him is Mama Waidaka. Uh, his wife to Bishop Alan, and next to uh, them is my wife. <laughs> See, as mom. Yeah, we have the congregation. Yeah, when we came to Nalobi uh, to bring our condolences, some words that were spoken by Ida said that when Kenneth was uh, detained, there is a part that is not usually shown, the pain of the family. And it's just seen, people, uh, the politicians are just in the limelight and they are shown what they had to go. But literally it's usually told about the torture and the pains of the family. These are the people who stand by us as we minister. As a church, 
There is so much we can say about Ken, and I don't want to spend a lot of time, but I cannot fail to forget uh, to, 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 to mention just one thing, that Ken was one of the initiators of an internalization uh, development initiative of allowed five dioceses. And the Anglican Church now has a multi-million project in Nairobi that was initiated by, among others, uh, Ken. And we can really remember him, and this is very, very important. In our diocese, he also initiated one of the projects that is doing very well, the Bishop Mahiaini Academy. And we cannot remember, we forget his contribution towards uh, these diocese. And he even gave his personal uh, donations to make sure that the school started. These are things, among other things, that we can remember him. Our churches all over the diocese and beyond, every Christian can tell you the donations, the support they received from Ken, and this is uh, quite remarkable. And uh, what we can do as a church, we will sit with the family and to see what space can we uh, give Matiba just to remember him and you'll be sitting with the family soon just to discuss a number of issues. What can we do just to remember Ken uh, as a church? I also request possibly the governor and uh, other people, leaders in the county to at least identify a project. I know our governor has identified uh, uh, Kenneth Matiba Hospital, but we, and we really appreciate uh, that, but we still need to do more, especially naming uh, uh, various or a number of institutions, and especially at least one or two in the county after, uh, after him. We have, when we see, when we look at the whole nation, we find universities like Jaramogi Odiga University, Masida Murilo, uh, Kenyatta University. And uh, we need uh, some prominence of this name because it's quite unique in our county and many more possibly we share with the family and discuss more. Uh, Prophet Samo, in the reading that was led to us, is a challenge to all of us. If you do your own research on characteristics most desired in a leader, no doubt, honesty and integrity will be identified more frequently than any other. If people are going to follow someone, whether into battle or in business or ministry, they want assurance that their leader can be trusted. They want to know that he or she will keep promises and follow through with the commitments. And in this chapter that we learned from First Samuel chapter 12, we find the integrity of Samuel. And Israel's high regard for Samuel comes as no surprise. Samuel was a man who exuded integrity. Nowhere in the Bible is best illustrated than in First Samuel chapter 1 verse 4. And for the sake of those people possibly who never followed, Samuel stood and talked or and addressed all the Israelites. And he said, I have listened to everything you say to me and have set a king over you. Agarieni ni meisikirisa sautienu katika hayo yote nilio mulini wa bia. Na ni mtawasa mfarume juyenu. Now you have a king as your leader. As for me, I am old and gray. My sons are here with you. I have been your leader from my youth until this day. Basi sasa agarieni mfarume anakweda bere yenu. Na mimi ni mze mwenye mvi. Tena tazameni wana wangu wapo pamoja nanyi. Nimekweda bere yenu toka ujana wangu. Here I stand, testify against me in the presence of the Lord and his anointed. Whose ox have I taken? Whose donkey have I taken? Whom have I cheated? Whom have I oppressed? From whose hand have I accepted a bribe 
to make me shut my eyes. If I have done any of this, I will make it light. Nani nipo hapa? Basi munishuhudia bere za buwana. Na bere ya masi hiyo wake. Nalitoa ngobe wa nani? Au nalitoa puda wa nani? Au ni nani ni memdhulumu? Ni nani ni liemwanea? Au mkono eh, kwa mkono wa nani ni mepokea lushwa? Ili mpofushe macho. Nami ni tawarudishia nini? And all the congregation stood. They said, you have not cheated or oppressed us. They replied, you have not taken anything from anyone's hand. Now wakasema, huku tudhulumu, wana huku tuwanea, wana huku pokea kitu kwani mkono wa mutu, kwa mkono wa mutu, awaye yote. Akawabia, buwana ni shahidi juu yenu, na masihi wake ni shahidi leo, na kuwa hamuku wana kitu mkono ni muangu. Now wakasema, Yeye ni shahidi. This was during the farewell speech. After having led the children of Israel for decades, and Samuel promised to repay anything he had unjustly taken from anyone. What a promise. Even more impressive was the people's response. Not one person lost to, uh, to make a claim against Samuel. And I want to challenge leaders present and all of us, try one time to start and tell the people whom you are leading to test you, to say anything about you. I don't know what would happen if you tested in that way. And uh, when we, we see people in hotels and uh, the social media report some of these things, actually we, we feel ashamed because of our leaders. And whether it is extortion or any other, why put yourself in awkward situations like that and fight your own life, your political life after that? Maxwell defines leadership. Maxwell is a, a master of leaders and my uh, mentor in leadership. He defines leadership as influence. And leadership is the ability to inspire and instill confidence in others. It is the role of the leadership to organize and coordinate resources, energies, and relationships for a common goal. Samuel's honesty and personal integrity permeated every area of his life. And these two characteristics directed how he regarded his possessions, his business dealings, and his treatment of those who were weaker than himself. And Samuel held himself accountable to the people he led. He opened himself up to the scrutiny of everyone with whom he had ever had dealings. And as a result of this practice, Samuel's leadership has become legendary and as his story has been told and retold throughout the centuries. And we have the Bible with us even today and is still as strong as it was in those years. People want to know that their leader can be trusted. They want to know that the leaders you keep promises and follow through on commitments. Promises and commitments are significant. We often see more concerned with convenience and performance. We give lip service to the importance, um, lip service to the importance of character. But we have the idea that when things get tough, the rules can be changed and commitments and covenants may be disregarded at will. And because I don't want to keep you for long, I just want to highlight some few things or some graphics, some five graphic images uh, as shown, just to summarize uh, uh, Paul, uh, this man of God uh, some more and what he had uh, for us today. In Jude chapter 12, and Jude verse 12 to verse 13, there are five images that um, can really remind us and remind each one of us that we as leaders, we as family members, we as parents, we as teachers, we as clergy, all of us gather together 
to bid farewell this great hero of reformation. We need to know that we need to focus and trust that God you uh, guide our footsteps and you know that we do. In, uh, I just want to read those few verses, then uh, um, highlight the few uh, graphic images. These are hidden leaves at your low love feast, as they feast with you without fear, shepherds feeding themselves, waterless crowds swept along by the weeds, fruitless trees in late out moon, twice dead uprooted, wild waves of the sea casting up in form of their own shame, wandering stars for whom the groom of utter darkness has been reserved forever. For those possibly who have not understood well, I want to highlight those uh, uh, five graphics, images that we need. Leaders should not use their power for their own benefit. Leadership, as I've said, is influence, any service. It is a relationship of influence. Jude says, shepherd who feeds only themselves. We need to be selfless. As I was listening to people presenting their tributes, one of the key things that was said by the alumni is the word selfless, that Ken was selfless. This is a virtue that we need to learn. We need to be selfless in our leadership because this is very, very important. Second image is the image of crowds without rain. Mawingu, Yasio, Namaj. Leadership is about, uh, it's about vision and hope. The whole of this week as bishops, you have been in Mombasa and I had to cut short my uh, retreat for the sake of this uh, occasion. And one of the key things that I, uh, I observed, I have not traveled on the SGR, Your Excellency, and yesterday I had the opportunity to travel and it was marveling, it was quite wonderful. And uh, I could see the mind of the leaders uh, that we have. Don't be a crowd without lane. Imagine the expectations your fraternity have on your leadership. As, the, as they look to the sky, they see crowds heading their way. The promise of rain looms large on the horizon, vision of crops growing, of food on the table, yet the crowds passes by, blown on by the weed, failing to deliver on their promise, the vision with us. Leadership is about vision. It's about tomorrow. It's about hope. It's about mission. I like what uh, John Stanko, who, also, who is also my mentor, who says, so many leaders, yes, lead through leadership. I don't know whether you are part of that. Let us rise to the occasion and be leaders of vision. Leader, leaders very focused in what you do. When that family is observed, there are people who can detect this father had a vision. Susan here says, my father was vision, had a lot of vision for us as a family. The other image, number three, leadership is about character and trust. And what Jude says here, he says, out moon trees without fruit, uprooted twice, twice dead. Nimiti, irio pukutika, isiona matuda, irio kufa, marabili, na kungolewa kabisa. Trees without roots produce no fruit. Let us have the base, our base be formed in God. And this image focuses on the expectation of results. Leadership not rooted in the love of God is shaky. Let root our identity, our dignity and security in God. The image number four is leadership. Leadership is about relationships and power. And from this text, Jude, he says, wild waves of the sea forming up their shame. Leadership is a relationship of power. Nimawibi ya bahari ya siyo zulika ya kitoa aibu ya wenyewe kama povu. Let us not be such leaders. Such leaders who are not selfless, 
such leaders who are just there to serve themselves. And as I speak to you, I also speak to myself as the leader of the church. Let us rise to the occasion and uh, start to be counted. Leadership is about relationship and power. Let us focus on God. And lastly, leadership is about dependency and accountability. From this leading, we are told wandering stars for whom blackest darkness has been reserved forever. Nyota zipoteazo abao weusi wagiza dio akiba yao walio wekewa milele. Short term gains but no long term uh, perseverance. Some institutions have a lot of activity but no relationship. Let us rise to the occasion. It is for us to learn from Ken because he was such a good leader who can be remembered forever. And I want to add with a short story about uh, a man who his life tried to climb Mount Everest. I knew Mount Everest is the highest mountain in the whole world. And uh, he couldn't be able to climb that mountain. The more he tried, the more he grew old, and the more he could not make it to the top. And on his deathbed, he was requested by his handlers, the family, and other members. And uh, he was asked, because you are leaving us, and you know it is our custom, that the person who is leaving us should write the epitaph, you know, that inscription on the, on the tube. It is the person who is dying to provide that epitaph, the wordings. And he told them, just write, he died crying. Can you all say, he died crying? That was the inscription that was put. And it's all of us as leaders, we need to die crying. In the pursuit of our goals and vision, Ken is a reformation icon. He died crying. Can you say, he died crying? May the Lord help us. May the Lord help us to emulate someone in all that we do in our lives as leaders and as Christians and all of us to learn from the wordings of Samo and more so from this departed hero of reformation. And may God bless you. We give God the glory. That was a powerful message for all of us in our different capacities. At this juncture, Your Excellency, we can never come into the altar empty-handed. And so we will prepare in response to that powerful sermon to give our offertories. As we prepare to give our offertories, we shall only sing one stanza, and then the choir will prepare to lead us in the rest of the singing until we are through with the offertory. So I kindly request that we all stand. Only one stands at either or to Murata without the callers. That is to prepare ourselves to give as the people entrusted with that work organizes themselves. Tither to Murata, it is right in our programs. And then the choirs, prepare yourself to lead us in the rest of the songs. Family, I also kindly request you to prepare yourselves because after the offertory, we shall get into the prayer for the family. So I guess and I want to believe that the family members are gathered together. T. Murata, only one stanza, then we shall get seated, and then the choir will continue leading us in the rest. T.
as we continue giving our offer to it.
For the offertory. Our loving Father, in the name of thy Son Jesus Christ, we are so much grateful because of this day that you gave us to come and give a send off to our beloved brother Kenneth. We want to thank you because of the many blessings that you have given to each and every one of us. What we have given now is a response to what you have done to us as individuals. We bring it to you, Lord, that you may receive it as a sweet aroma. And as you use it, Lord, we pray that you may use us as well. For together with what we have given, we all belong to you. And this is our prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. We shall join the family in singing him in on our programs, Tigawali Mwena Wakwa. And we request now the family members to come forward as the archdeacons and canons drops down to surround the family and the bishops who stand who are going to lead us in praying for the family. So members, let's go to our programs, Tigawari Mwena Wakwa and the choir to lead us in that song. Please choir, you can be standing. Uh, you can be standing as you lead us in that song. And then the family members, please come forward.
we join the family. Thank you, Bishop, for your words and especially the fact that because of the sacrifice of our departed brother and a great leader, that uh, we should establish different institutions to be named after him. But more so is to commit Mama Edith and your five children, your grandchildren, the, the family, into the hands of the Almighty God so that the sacrifice that this great man did for Kenyans, the suffering that he went through, a reminder of Psalm 126, those who saw in tears shall reap with shouts of joy. And he who goes out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, bringing his sheaves with him. And let us make our prayer that God may restore your fortunes. Whatever you lost on the way with your husband, you, with your great father, let the Lord restore your fortunes. Let us also pray that God will be manifest and his power will be manifest in the life of our mother, Mama Edith, Nanuo nage kuyo, wehoke mwadha ni rugedo ini, nina wa Susan. No mume nyewega utali gaja, ona wona dhena tigagwea. Wegu wako ini kwake, doka hoto. Maybe for him we lost the battle, but we have not lost the war. Let us also pray Susan and your siblings, that you reckon God had given your father a great gift of fearlessness. May that God, is our prayer, double the portion to you as children. May you do much more as Elisha did more than Elijah. May this family Become great. May all your businesses start to grow again and to prosper. May you become great men and women. May the Lord remember this family. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you that we all belong to you. And for each one of us, you have given us different years and different times to live in this world. And for this great man was 85, 86 years. And for him was endowed these great gifts. And he did great things for his family, for his wife and children, and for this nation. And because you are different from us as human beings, and Paul wrote and said, you can do more than we think or imagine. We commit this family into your hands, Lord. We remember that they have gone through hard times and they have endured. But now that you have taken the life of our brother, our father, this great man, we commit them in this family into your hands. Remember Mama Edith. Remember her sacrifice with her husband. Restore her fortune. Restore her health. Give her more years to see what you can do for her. We pray that God will remember these children, all the five, that they are now adults. As they continue to ask questions, you are the answer man, Lord. Answer to them by doing great things. Let them have a double portion of the great gifts of their father, that they will not regret that he was their father. 
that God, they will be able to become great women and men in this nation and in this world. Bless whatever they take to do, that they will meet with a double portion, a double success. And we pray that God, your blessings, will be in this family. Let us remind them the words of Paul, that in all things, good and bad, great and small, in all things, Lord, you joined them. They are knitted together to bring good to those that love you. So they are all good things that this man has done. All the bad things that he went through, join them, Lord, that they may become a great blessing to this family. We pray that we shall all, all of us learn something from this great man that we shall plant some seeds for the generations to come. Now I pray, Lord, that you continue to shepherd over this family, that you to our mother Edith become what you did to Naomi and Ruth, that as they left the foreign land, they were empty, but in returning, they were greatly blessed. Bless this lady, O oh Lord. Bless these children, O oh Lord. Bless this family, O oh Lord. And we bless them now in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. session in praying for the family. Thank you choir for that harmony. At this juncture now I wish to call upon Sami Louis once again to take us in the rest of the program. So Sami, take over. Thank you, Provost, Mama Susan, Your Excellency, with your permission, I'd like to make all members of the County Assembly of Moranga, led by the Speaker, the Right Honorable Nduati Kariuki, are here with us. And so also are all the CEC members of Muranga County, present with us, led by the Governor, His Excellency. Na mtazamaji kwa hivyo ndivyo hivyo, misa hiyo ideendelea na kuna wengi ambona tajua kusema makuzungumza kutotu bazao ntokwa tukenda kwa obadaya. Lakini katika mtando yetu wa kijamii kama nivyo kupasha ukiwe kama swali yako mwoni ya uhata mapendekezo tuapata kuyangazia. Na kwa sasa pengine ni angalia mmoja tu kabla kuandalea na mjadala wetu. Abdala Mdambo anasema kumba ugatuzi umewanufaisha sana wanawake katika uongozi, wanawake wapepewa na fasi kama vile uwakilishi wa wanawake sijui kama walipewa ama walipigania lakini ndivyo hivyo Rashid nitakuwa niko rejisheni kwenye mpate kuendelea kuzungumzia Abdalla Mdambo anahisi kwamba amepewa nafasi kama ile wakilishi wa wanawake sijui kama hilo ni manufaa kutokana na ugatuzi mpira kwako Naam shukrani sana Daniel Bule nafikiri wanawake huwa wakiambiwa maswala ya wakilishi wa wanawake huona kama hicho kiti na bali kuja kawa ujumu ni kama kina washtaki kwa sababu wanaonekana kwamba watu wengi wanaamini kwamba kiti chao ni hicho na viti vingine waweze kuvitupilia mbali lakini swala ambalo anasema kwamba Abdalla Mdambo kwamba lazima mshukuru kwa sababu katiba tayari imewapa nafasi kwa kiti cha uwakilishi mwanamke. Kiti cha uwakilishi 
cha wanawake lipo katika bunge la kitaifa lakini kiko katika bunge la county mm -hmm. bunge za county hazina kiti mm -hmm. ama viti vya kina mama wakilishi mm -hmm. kwa hivyo tutawezi kusema kwa kwa sababu kuna kina mama wa bunge um, katika uh, seri, uh, uh, bunge la kitaifa kwa hivyo tushukuru tuseme katika county na ugatuzi hivyo basi tuachilie tu tuseme hakuna chochote kile tuweza kufanya ni lazima tuanze kuangalia pengine kama tuasema tukue na uh, marekebisho ya katiba hilo ni jambo moja lazima tuanze kuangalia tukianza kusema hatutaki kupewa katiba yafanya nini katika kuona kwa kina mama wameakilishwa wa katika bunge za county katika bunge za county uh, umekuja na hoja nyingine ambayo nitaigusia baada yake kuna swali moja ni kwamba amuoni kwamba ili kuweza ku, kubadilisha uh, kubadilisha uwimbo wa kwamba mwanamke afaidiki vina hivi na hivi imefika wakati kama wanawake mweze kusemezana na muweze kuambia pia wanaume ama wanaume pia wasaidie katika safari kwa mwanamke aanze kuwajibika yeye mwenyewe maana kuna fikiri kwamba kuna baadhi wanaoji katika simu anasema kwamba Rashidi wanawake tatalamika kila siku maana yake hawataki kujitolea na hawataki kuwajibika wanaowajibika tumeona wamefaulu mbona wasiwe kama wale ambao wameza kuwajibika na wakafaulu uende kwa katiba ina shida lakini mtazamo na fikra za wanawake baadhi ndio tatizo sijui unachukulia hilo swali basi um kuna ukweli pale lazima pia sisi tubadilisha tu mafikra maoni yetu vile tunajiangalia kama wanawake pia tuweze kujua ya kwamba tumepewa hiyo nafasi tuichukue tui tuendeleze lakini kuna jambo tu moja wanaume wamekuwa kwa hii upande wa uongozi wamepewa wamekuwa na muda mwingi kusoma sasa umetupe nafasi wajaribu kutuambia sisi tuko nasari unataka tuende university mm -hmm. hamjatupeleka moja kwa moja ili tuelewe mlipata shida gani ili sisi pia tusome tuweze kujua kama tumesoma hao ambao kama Joyce Laboso amekuwa kwa uongozi kwa muda mm -hmm. alianza pahali moja akaenda haku amka siku moja aka ndio so kwa hivyo kuna ile utaratibu ambao unafahamu mpeo pia wa mama si atukom, sisi atupigi kelele ni vile tu tungependa mkitupe hiyo nafasi muache kutu kulinganisha sisi na wanaume ndio tunafaa kwa pale kama washirika iko mm -hmm. lakini si ya kwamba kusema hatuna e, nini uh, hatuwezi kuwa na tunashukuru yes lakini kuna ile ile maono wanatupe sisi kama wamama mpaka hata wewe mwenyewe unajiuliza mbona haukupe ule kiongozi mwanaume ni kama mnadhalilishwa na kuweza kudunishwa yeah. naam nafikiri hapa kuna swala moja kwamba mnalizungumza mbona ninajirudia ni kwamba uh, ni uwakilishi sawa wa jinsia zote mbili na ule mswada pale bungeni kupitishwa kwake si kwamba unamsaidia mwanamke peke yake hata kesho dadi ya wanawake ikiwa nyingi mswada ule utaweza kumsaidia pia mwanamme kuweza kupata wakilishi sawa. Kima yoni yenu mnafikiria ni kwa nini kumekuwa na ugumu mswada ule kuweza kupitishwa? Kwa sababu hausaidi mwanamke peke yake. Leo hii ni mwanamke maana yake ndiye idadi ndio chache. Lakini uwezi jua labda baada ya miaka mingine kumi. mbona bado kumekuwa na ugumu na ile hali tuko na vyama vya wanawake, tuko na chama cha wanawake bungeni ambacho kina Uh, kina purity ngirishi ambao wanaongoza hicho hicho chama na kadhalika mmekuwa na ushawishi gani kuhakikisha kwamba una mswada mnawafanya wanaume waelewe kwamba si wa mwanamke lakini ni mswada utakaosaidia yoyote atakayekuja kandamizwa siku za usoni kwa maoni yangu nikiangalia yale ambayo yametokea katika hii wiki tumekuwa na kongamano na upande ule mwingine tumekuwa tukiangalia maisha ya mheshimiwa marehemu Kenneth, Kenneth Matiba. Matiba. Yeah. Na kwangu nimekuwa ninajiuliza na sema nikiangalia pengine katika vyombo vya habari twazungumzia sana kusema Mheshimiwa Matiba alipigania uongozi hivi na hivi na hivi alidhulumiwa hivi na hivi na hivi. Je, kulikuwa na kina mama wakati huo? Nini kilifanyika na Mheshimiwa Grace Ogot? Nini kilifanyika na Mheshimiwa Julia Ojiambo? Nini kilifanyika na Mheshimiwa Wangari Mathai? Mbona tusiwaweke hawa kina mama kando na wa, wa, viongozi wanaume kama mheshimiwa Matiba tukawa tunasema hawa viongozi kina mama katika uongozi katika nafasi ile ama za mazile walipitia machungu gani katika kuwa viongozi wa kitaifa ama kuwa wabunge 
walipigania Kenya kiasi gani kama hatuwezi kuzungumzia kina mama kwa nafasi ile ya waheshimiwa kama vile Grace Ogot, Julia Ojiambo, Wangari Mathai na kadhalika ambao kwetu sisi kama kina mama sasa hivi katika siasa tuona machungu mengi sana kupata uongozi wao ilikuwa ni uzito kiasi gani wakati ule kwa hivyo ni lazima tuanze kuangalia vile katika habari katika vyombo vya habari katika ripoti zozote tunazozitoa tunapowazungumzia viongozi wanaume acha na basi upa, katika upande ule mwingine tuangalie viongozi kina mama tukifanya vile tuanza kuleta usawa katika uongozi na hapo basi jamii anza kusema ah basi kuna viongozi kina mama ambao wanaweza kama vile viongozi wanaume wanavyoweza lakini kwa hilo kwa hilo unaweza kulikubali kwa asilimia fulani mm. maana kwa sababu mimi ni mwanahabari mm. lakini nafikiri hata kupitia mauti yake uh, kwaweza kuondoka bi wangar madhaya mm. mungu mweka malepema mm. uh, ni kwamba tuliweza kuzungumzia pia mchango wake mm. na tukafanya makala tukaweza kuonesha safari aliyotoka uh, vugu vugu alioanzisha haki aliweza kupigania maadhila aliweza kupitia na hakeza kuangaziwa kwa kina na wakati huo nafikiri pia wanawake waliridhika jinsi ambavyo wanaweza kuangaziwa. Sure. Kwa hiyo na 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 imani kwamba ni ni mtazamo tu tulio nao. La la Rashid. Ah bado ni mnakubalia kwamba bado amjapewa kipaumbele katika kuangaziwa katika vyombo vya habari. Ameguzia hoja moja ambayo ambayo ni muhimu sana. Tukiangalia kama biwangari madhai. Kabla hajakufa hakuna mwenye alikuwa anamtambua kabla hajapewa ile Nobel Prize hakuna mwenye alikuwa anamtambua lakini tukiangalia demokrasia wangari madhaya kupewa Nobel Prize kwa sababu ya miti mm -hmm. la alipewa Nobel Prize kwa sababu ya ugatusi uh, kuangalia siasa Hati. za leo lakini hakuna mwenye alikuwa anamtambua saa hii ambapo uh, Kenneth Matiba ameaga ndio sasa tunataka kujua oh huyu ndiye hivi hapo ndio tunakosea kama jamii wakati wako wa hai atuatambui wakifa ndio tu sasa tunataka kupeana zile rambi rambi vile wametubadilishia demokrasia lakini wakiwa hai atuwapatie ile ma, ma, maana kwa hivyo kwangu si ya kwamba hatu ni, ni vile jamii imekuzwa kuwa hatupei umuhimu wale wako hai wale wametutetea hatujawapea kwa hiyo jamii hapa ina ina ina, ina uozo fulani ambao mm. mnazungumzia lindi na mwanzako besi ni kwamba mtoto wa kike hajapewa thamani na ustahili really? walioanza kupigia nia uongozi hadi kufikia sasa hivi bado hajapewa thamani na ustahili mm -hmm. Na nyinyi mnadhani kwamba suluhisho hilo lipo kwa mujibu wa katiba tulionayo hivi sasa. Kweli. Yes. Na kama katiba tulionayo hivi sasa mmesema kwamba yeshimiwe itaheshimiwa vipi? Lazima tuanze. Sababu tazi... nimeona oh. rais wetu akisema kwamba ye mia kwa mia. Tiba na heshima. Naibu wa rais nimemmsikia leo pia vile vile. Nasema matunda ya ugatuzi yanaonekana na serikali iko tayari kuweza kutoa msukumo kwa katiba kuweza kuheshimiwa. Ikiwa mnasema yeshimiwe na nani? Ile hali wale viongozi wa nchi wao wenyewe kwa vinia, kwa maneno na kwa vitendo. Wanasema wako tayari kuweza kuheshimiwa tena. Waingereza usema actions speak louder than words. Vitendo vyetu vyasema kwa sauti kubwa kushinda ma, maneno yetu. Mm -hmm. Kile twaangalia rais yasema kuwa anatetea katiba na amesimamia ugatuzi kina mama wako wapi? Ana nguvu ame, na, amepewa na katiba ile nguvu ya kuteua katika kuteua tu mawaziri ni wangapi kina mama vitendo vyake vyatuambia kama kweli anaheshimu katiba au ni kusema tu kwa sababu ya ile nafasi yuko nayo kwa vyovyote vile iwe ni kiongozi wa siasa wa upinzani iwe ni rais uhuru mwigai kenyata lazima tuanze kuangalia na kuwauliza kwa vitendo vyenu kweli mwatetea kina mama kweli mwasimamia juhudi zile kina mama na watoto wasichana wapitia kweli mwasema kuwa vile ambavyo viongozi wanaume wanaweza hivyo hivyo kina mama wanaweza mimi hata sitaki kusema sasa nataka kuona kwa katiba tuaiulizia jinsia two thirds gender rule mimi ningependa kuona nusu kwa nusu jinsia zote ziwe katika uongozi 
kwa njia ambayo sasa utapatikana wapi maana katiba isemi nusu kwa nusu katiba isemi ni kweli katiba haisemi nusu kwa nusu lakini ni kwetu sisi sasa kama kina mama lindiwafula nikiwa mmoja wao nasema wacha nijitokeze kama kiongozi nianze kusema ni vipi nitawahimiza kina mama na kuatia moyo na kusema ni lazima tupiganie kufika pale na unaposema kupigania pale na tupeleka pale pale waweza kwenda kubadilisha katiba yetu ya Kenya. Kama itabidi tubadilishe katiba ili kina mama waonekane katika uongozi, basi wacha iwe hivyo. Joe Mdivo nafikiri nitakuingiza sasa hivi katika imada. Karibu kuweza kufika nasema kawia lakini ufike. Ah uh, kima yako katiba hii imekuwa na manufaa kwa jinsia kike ama haijakuwa na manufaa kwa jinsia kike hususan mfumo wa ugatuzi mfumo wa ugatuzi umesaidia wanawake kupata nafasi za kupigania nyadhifa za uongozi uongozi katika nafasi ya kina mama peke yake. Kwa maana kama unasimamia kitu cha woman rep, jambo la kwanza ni lazima utakuwa mwanamke. Mm -hmm. Kwa hivyo hilo ni jambo la kwanza. Nimewafanya wale wanawake ambao pengine ujasiri wa kupigania ama kuwania viti na wanaume kidogo imewapungua, wanaweza kuanzia njia hiyo. Hilo ni jambo la kwanza. La pili, hao wanawake katika hiyo miaka tano, wana wanapata uzoefu wa kisiasa ambao unawasaidia katika kutafuta nyadhifa nyingine kutoka hapo. Tumeona kadha wakadha wakitoka kuania kiti cha women rep wakaamua wangangania kiti cha bunge. Uh, bunge kisawa sawa. La tatu ambalo limekuwa kwangu mimi ni manufaa ni kwamba katika kutengeneza hizi nafasi za wanawake uh, women rep pia tumepata nafasi ya kuwa na wanawake wengi zaidi wakiwa viongozi. Tukiangalia mfumo wapo wa awali, tulikuwa napata wanawake wamechaguliwa kama tuseme 10, 12, pengine wakiteuliwa wafike pengine 20, 25 katika bunge yote. Lakini sasa angalau tuko na ang wanawake tuseme hamsini kuendelea. Yam. Na hiyo imeongeza idadi ya wanawake ambao wanaonekana katika nafasi za uongozi. Njambo ambalo hilo limefanya ni kwamba hata wale ambao walikuwa hawajui walikuwa ile swali lilikuwa na si wanawake wenyewe weko wapi wanawake weko wapi mm. sasa angalau kuna wanawake kadhaa ambao unaona wametoka na ujasiri na umairi wa hali ya juu kitu ambacho kimekuwa ni mtego katika hicho kiti cha women rep ni kwamba wewe ni mbunge lakini mbunge wa kaunti nzima huna eneo bunge lako kusema mali mm. ma, kwa hivyo ukitaka kufanya tuseme umealikwa na women's group fulani kwa katika eneo bunge fulani yule mbunge wa eneo bunge hilo anaona kwamba wewe umeanza kuleta fitina na ushindani katika eneo bunge lake. Kwa hivyo unapata women rep hata sasa ile walikuwa hawana fedha, wakaja wakapoa fedha kidogo